had a boring gray plywood floor and an idea I've wanted to do for a while. Got some help to draw the board lines and then got started with paint couture as a base to go underneath the paint inlays. She chose paint couture because of its built-in top coat, so we felt it might be a little sturdier to use. After laying down the wet paint and double checking the border of the paint inlay, it was time to begin. We found, especially with paints with the built-in top coat, we like to go ahead and spray the backside before laying it down. It also helps stretch the paper just that little bit so there's less wrinkles. The brayer helps smooth it out and then you wet down the back of the paper. Little by little, just worked our way down the line, working just little bits at a time especially for this first row because I wasn't quite sure how it was going to go and I needed to get that first row straight because all the other rows were going to depend on it. You can see I didn't do the edge perfect, but the next one was going to be a paint line too, so that's when it would get straightened out. Just cleaning up that line because that's the edge of that piece. The next board is going to be stamped. You'll see there's spots where it didn't go down all the way, but we're actually going for a little bit of a distressed look, so it didn't really matter. Now here's a little bit of the sped up process because it's just repeating each step multiple times across the floor. Paint, lay down the paper, spray it, let it dry, spray to release, and go on to the next part. Time for more lines. These first rows did take longer than the later ones because it's just figuring out the process and just getting a system down. Don't know if you've noticed out the window, it's getting dark and should have been a sign that I was getting sort of tired and needed to be done. As you'll see, there's a few mistakes here that were made. Number one being putting an inlay down upside down. When you do that, you don't get an imprint, you literally just pick up paint. know how it is though you set a goal for a certain amount to get done and you keep going even when you probably should
here's where you're, you'll see what I'm doing is I wanted some of the boards to actually look like just plain painted boards that had had the paint started to chip and distress off. So vintage texture stamp. Did it just randomly over it for a crackled effect? <clears throat> I didn't want quite the small crackle lines of the the crackle or section, so we just use these larger crackles. And then this gives you the chippy paint look. We did boards like this randomly through the pattern. Maybe a total of, oh, I don't know, maybe five as we went. It was a small area that we were doing. What I'm using on the stamps here is actually the ink. I knew with enough time to dry, it would be fine. The color is actually a custom brown that we had mixed. Here we're adding some to actually the parts that had were painted and put an inlay on them just so that they could have some of the same effect. Not all of them, just randomly throughout the, the project. There's the paint inlay fail and time to go home. Back the next morning with one of my favorite little helpers. She's pretty good with that Mr. Bottle. We used a variety of the IOD stamps, and here we were using the masking technique and a variety of the inlays. We'll say Peeling that paper back and exposing the design that's left behind is a very satisfying thing to do. Just remember, if there's ever tension, you just need to wet that paper a little more because it should pull back nice and smooth, just like you see here. just a little bit of a paint glob, easy enough to just dab up while the paint is still wet. Here we added just a little bit of color with the stamps. In this section we did um, the green and china blue. Almost done. Just a few more rows to go. For all this work, I definitely wanted a good finish. We decided we would test out the Paint Couture Extreme Guard. This is actually the second layer of top coat. We did the first with the sprayer so that the design would not be disturbed since it stays as an active paint until it is sealed. We decided we wanted three top coats. The first, like I said, was the sprayer, and the second two were both done with this Lambswool applicator. We absolutely love the way it turned out, and so do the visitors to our shop.